Jack 5 Jeff from Two Hex Garage. Well, it's time to put on the Tunnel Ram intake manifold. It's a YN5993. Um, it's been ported. We've done a lot of modifications to that, which we have in another video. So we are going to show you how to install an intake manifold, specifically a Tunnel Ram, on one of these big black Ford 521 cubic inch 385 series motors. So I'm going to set this down real quick. And just kind of show you what we're working with here and how we're going to do it. Um, we do have ARP professional quality fasteners. These are meant for the big block Ford V8 and V8 385 series intake manifolds. These are a 12 point, so you'll need special sockets or wrenches for that if you already don't have them. On top of that, we are using the basic Felpro Performance uh, 1230 intake gaskets and at first we thought we were going to have just a little bit of clearance issues because we did raise up these heads with those comedic gaskets those were 70 thousandths thick the deck has been blocked a little or the block has been decked so we were kind of gauging around 60 to 70 thousandths on that where we're going to need to be so we actually checked it we don't have any problems so now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and walk through and show you guys how to put an intake manifold on one of these big block forts. See you in a few. So the first step, what we're going to do is we're going to clean the surface of these heads. I'm just going to use a, a typical CRC brake clean. I'm not going to spray directly on the motor. You don't want this going anywhere in here. So basically what you want to do is just spray it on your rag away from the motor. Just saturate that. Um, even though this is a new engine, you're constantly touching it, getting it greasy dirty there's dust so you just want to make sure you go in there and you know wipe the surface of your cylinder head down just you know I'm going in the ports a little bit just get any dust or dirt or grime around the water jackets there along the China rail just really make sure it's clean get the surface nice and clean on that because you know at this point we are buttoning it up on the top end, yes, you can take things apart, but why do things twice when you don't have to? Go to the other cylinder head, wipe that down, getting all of any contaminants, any grease, anything like that you just want to take off there. Like I said, I am going into the ports of these just to make sure they are clean because that is going right into the engine at that point. And if you have anything in there, it's gonna go right down in your cylinder. And if it's something you don't want in there, that's no bueno. So as you can see, got those all nice and clean along with the China rail here. And I'm gonna go ahead and wipe the surface of where the intake or the valve cover gaskets go because we're gonna go ahead and put those on too um, just to get everything protected. Um, yeah, that's the first step there. You just want to make sure it's all nice and clean. And, and so look at that. That is just dirt and contaminants that were on that. Right. Um, so yeah, that is the first step. Go ahead and clean everything up. And you just mind you, this is just a little bit of word of advice here. Just look down in here to make sure you don't have any tools, any debris. Like I said, we are putting this thing down on there. Um, so with that, we're going to go ahead and get started on installing the intake manifold. Maybe. Maybe. We won't know until we try it. Okay. But, oh, dig in your gasket set and find the engine pieces. Okay. So there is also other... Um, gaskets that go along with this, they go along the China rail, so I'm going to go ahead and dig those out right now. There should be a front one and a rear one on that. Um, we are actually using cork. You don't need to wipe the end of the block off. No, not them. Or did they send rubber? No, they sent cork. Really? Yeah. Only cork? Oh, cool. I did wipe these down. So if you look here, 
before you start putting any sealant down, which we will, let's make sure they fit in there. As I think both ends are the same, I think, on these things. Let's test fit them. And no, they don't fit. They don't fit. So it's, if you, before you put any of the actual gasket sealant down, I know this is cork, but you always want to put just a little bit of extra seal in there. We'll show you here in a minute. Before you do that, lay your gaskets in place, because if you look here, that's too long. Same thing with this one. That's too long. So it's always a good idea to trim these. And what Jimmy's going to do is he's going to go ahead and trim that. You want to trim it away from the engine just so you don't drop that piece of cork down in there, and that would just be an absolute hassle. Yeah, it's non-magnetic. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I got lucky. So got lucky on that one, and you see here, that one is pretty yeah, well. I just knew what I was doing. I, I think it's you know what you're doing. No, I probably got lucky. I prefer the orange motors. I don't want to ruin your video, but I prefer the, prefer the <laughs> orange motors. I prefer the orange motors that are Chrysler. Yeah, they work. <laughs> yep. So there you go. So as you can see there, now the gaskets actually properly fit onto the China rails. Um, just a little tip there. Just before you put any gasket sealer down or before you do anything, test fit your gaskets. What kind of gasket sealant are we using, Jimmy? Nothing, because I can't get the tube open. I gotta think of first wire. Weather strip cement. So we're basically using a weather strip cement that's gonna go in between these layers. The cork gaskets aren't uh, per se bad. They actually do work pretty well. They've been in you know use for well over a hundred years. Um, but just for a little bit more sealant, we're going to go ahead and add some of the rubber, the weather strip cement in there. The weather strip cement is going to hold the cork to the block. Commonly called yellow death. Because it is almost impossible it's, to get off. That's right. It about kills you taking it off. Always glue the, I always glue the oil pan gaskets on with this. I've been doing it my whole life. I've never had one fail yet. Also works good for a mildly wife. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down here. And mind you, um, this is something you'd want to set up, let it you know, dry, cure, uh, whatever term you want to use. You want to make sure it cures in place uh, before you fire the engine. So just kind of press that down into place. Nice, firm on there. Now, we are going to torque the intake manifold down on this, but... We do want these to be held in place where they're supposed to be. And so I'm just kind of working it in there a little bit. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. This is the cheap microphone I use from Amazon. I think Kyle and I have gone through about three or four sets of them. Um, just keep that in mind when you're making videos. Don't really buy the expensive ones because these things, I've ran one over, um, ran one through the washing machine. <laughs> Um, never have good luck on it. You know, the whole, the whole premise of this is we're focusing on the work we're doing, uh, could, not the film production. I could hear it now, blub, blub. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was bad. Well, this weather strip cement works fine, too, if you got a pesky neighbor when he's going to squirt it in his door locks in his house. <laughs> yeah. Better than super glue. Yep. Acetone doesn't melt this stuff. <laughs> So yeah, this is the goo of death, as Jimmy said. It's really hard to get off. Uh, he's an experienced machinist, mach uh, experienced engine builder. Everyone's got their own way, but this has been a performance proven know-how application he's used over the years. So we're gonna go ahead and stick with that. We've already determined that we can get by with these thin head gaskets, or intake gaskets, yep. sorry. Um, now I just want to make sure that I don't have to trim on them any. And, oh, we got an issue. Right there. That needs yeah, to be trimmed. right here. So when you're putting these intake gaskets on. When they stamped it, it's just a tad bit. A little off. tad bit. So what Jimmy saw was when he put this down here, um, again, you don't put your any sealant or anything down without checking it. You want to make sure all the bolt holes high, or line up. Um, on there, let me kind of show you here um, with this one. And these do only go one way. So what he is seeing is on that other one, you can see it right here that it's hitting. 
It's hitting on the cometic gaskets. What needs to happen is in order for these to line up, he's just going to trim those pieces off. You can go below it, but then you might run a risk of not having a proper seal. Well, it was obstructing the bolt hole, and it still is. So I got to trim. This is getting more in line. Trim a little bit more off of it on this end and both ends. Either that or the bolt holes and the heads ain't right. Right, and we've spent a lot of time on gasket matching everything. We do have previous videos on that. I want this 521 cubic inch big block Ford engine that's been uh, quite a bit of an engineering marvel, if you want to call it, what we've had it gone through with supply chain issues, getting things to fit right and all that. Um, I want it to breathe right. We've spent a lot of time on it. So when you're doing this stuff, you just want to do it right the very first time. Um, so he's going back and he's trimming that gasket up. And, you know, you can see with these Kometic gaskets we use, there's this tab here. And it's actually hitting that there, and it's hitting in here. But you just want to make sure all these bolt holes do line up. So take your extra time. Do your checking. Do your trimming. Over there. Right and in the center where it belongs. Right in the center. So you can see here, it's laying against that Kometic gasket in place. And here, same thing. So it's actually where it needs to be. And by the way, so far... I'm very pleased with Cometics gaskets. They seem to fit without any issues on their head gasket. They fit perfect. Very good, very good quality. Well, so you can find going. them. Yeah, if you can find them, that's another thing right now, guys. Everyone's frustrated with supply chain issues. I really hope things really start going in a positive direction with that. Um, no Name National is a big event. A lot of people are driving going to Jimmy's, which he's about 40 miles from my house. I had to get fuel. I paid $4.76 a gallon for regular unleaded. That's It's uncalled for. That's my rant. Things need to change. Us in the hobby, we work hard for our money, and we just want to have fun and be able to do it, you know, on a budget. So, no offense, I don't want to ruin your video, but that would be our wonderful state of Illinois. That starts with an H. Yes, we do live in the state of Illinois. They, they take us every which way they can. There we go. Everything so, fits. There you go. If you look, all these line up, centered. He trimmed here. Did you trim it down here a little bit too? Um, all, all four. Corners. All four corners. And if you can see, that was the Kometic gasket tabs. And it's kind of nice. It actually has a little shelf where those sit in place while we go ahead and do this. You can thank Henry Ford for that one. Yes. So check that out. They're trimmed. And what's the next step, Jimmy? Well... Are the ends tight? No, they're getting there. We'll, we'll glue these to the heads, and then when they get set in place, we'll come back, we'll put silicone all over the place. I know it has silicone here around the porch, but it's only on the outside, not on the inside. But still, it don't make any difference. We're going to make sure that this thing does not leak. Period. So, just for our viewers, what happens if there is a leak? It depends on how bad the leak is. If it, I mean, it can be a vacuum leak, and it's going to cause one cylinder to run lean. Of course, it's going to cause the engine to not respond right. Um, if, if there's an oil leak, usually if there's an oil leak in any of them, it's back here. If there's a water leak, it could possibly leak into the engine or out here on the ground. Um, it's kind of a mixed bag of tricks, you know, just... When the world is right and everything's sealed up, we're good. But when things aren't sealed up and the world's not right, well, just look at the news. You yeah. got the question answered. There's your question right there. So just like how the world goes around, if everything's not right, it's a whole big problem. Same thing with an engine. Um, vacuum leaks can run lean. That would hurt your engine. Never a good idea. Oil leaks, you know, that's just grimy. It's nasty. You don't want that to happen. And you don't want water leaks in here because if water leaks get in down in there, water and oil do not mix well. So with that, what we're going to do is we are going to seal this up here, let stuff dry into place. So it's held into place when we go ahead and put that toner ram in. But with that, I'm actually going to take a quick break. It's nice outside. going to go grab a bottle of cold water and shoot the ship Jimmy for a minute. See you in a few. All right, well, I'm back. And Jimmy's going to use the same weather strip stuff um, as we did before um, to do the intake gaskets. So let me get Jimmy a rag real quick here. Here you go. So 
always good to have rags around. Here. So he's going to go ahead and put that into place. Now mind you, like I said before, you want all of this to set up, cure, whatever you want to call it, before you actually do run the engine. Cure, um, cure dry, whatever you want to call yep. it. Yep. As you can see, he's going through there, going around all the holes. And this is going to make a proper seal. So when this 521 cubic inch engine is breathing, making horsepower, we're not going to have any problems. Fingers crossed, knock on wood. Bad news is this stuff dries really fast, so you got to get it on there. Yeah, and it's a it's a hot day. It's about 92 degrees. And of course, this, we got a fan going. Yeah, which is not helping any, but it's working. Okay, gasket. We're going to put that into place. You can see, line up the holes. Nothing crazy. It's not rocket science. Just a little bit of added protection. Can never be too safe. Lid. Just to kind of show you what we are using here. It is this weather strip here. It's in a little container. It actually smells kind of nice. Probably not good for you, but you know what? Nothing is in this world nowadays. Um, a lot of things that smell nice ain't good for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and more in one way. So what Jimmy's doing now is he's just going to go through and he's tacking it into place, finding any excess stuff. And go from there. <sighs> Jimmy, it is kind of nice. Uh, be able to work with the door open all winter long. Oh, geez. We worked in here. Um, door closed. Snowy outside. It's the same amount of space we're working in, but with a door open and a breeze and sunshine, it makes things a whole lot more enjoyable. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, we got cheated out of our... Spring. Cooler spring, yeah, but they're, they're claiming next week it's supposed to be 60s, 70s, or 70s and 80s. I've mowed three so. times in the last week. I mowed again this morning, and we mowed Monday of this week, <laughs> so. It's pretty wild. They're talking a little rain tonight. Kind of need it. Um, oh, and by the way, real quick, uh, Jimmy himself, while he's doing that, he has got one hell of a little street rod thing going on back there. And if you see here, it is powered also by Big Block Ford. 468 on. inches or 6, 466, 468, whatever, 30 over 460 is. So, yeah, it is beautiful. He built this years ago for a friend of his. The chassis. No, he built the chassis years ago for a friend of his. I mean, it and had a 429 Hemi in it. Yeah, it had the Boss 429 Hemi when he built it years ago. hemi has got it, and he's built the engine, built the supercharger. He's going through a bunch of things on it, and he hasn't fired it yet. But you know what? Have. Oh, you did fire it? It runs, but oh. I just... I haven't even had it. I only had it started five minutes. It didn't have any water in it. I shut it off. I finished the water system and put coolant in it and haven't run it since. And what did I drop? Something fell out earlier. Hit my foot. Oh, your oh. doodah thing. Yeah. Your doodah again. Sorry. So what's going to be kind of cool is is um, when Jimmy goes in and gets this out, I think we're going to have to do a video, show you guys what this thing sounds like. Um, he, he claims it's a mild engine, but this guy's used to building nitro small block chevy injected stuff so in his world i'm sure it is mild but a, in the world of the rest of us it's probably a pretty hot supercharged yeah, engine a flat top ford with a hydraulic um flat tappet cam in it and uh my cylinder heads are actually they were smog motor heads so to speak they're yeah. i think they're 72 or 73 and i put a uh, machine the pedestals off of them and put studs in them so they're independent rockers like this or and or I mean whatever you want to call it um, without the pedestals what size, and, tire? Um, what size tires on the back of that those things are absolutely huge 15 inch uh, Hoosiers yeah look at the size of these bad boys back there those are absolutely pretty it had uh, it had some kind of an old NASCAR tire that was like 15 inches wide Firestone on it but they were uh, 35 years old and weathercraft 
the front wheels and tires are the original 35 year old wheels and tires. Look at that, and those are absolutely beautiful. All the chrome on the car is original 35 year old chrome. And one thing Jimmy showed me when I first started coming over here, the cooling system in this thing actually goes into the frame itself, which is actually pretty cool. Yeah, I designed that years ago. My friend didn't think that the that four inch thick radiator was going to keep that Hemi, that Ford Hemi cool. Um, so it comes out of the top of the engine to the radiator, comes out of the bottom to the, of the radiator after the electric fan cools it to the right frame rail, goes back to the car, or the back end of the car, through a number 12 fitting to an electric fuel pump, which is vastly, or electric water pump, sorry, which vastly improved over the years. Um, back down the left frame rail, out of the left frame rail to two number 10 lines into the timing cover and makes the complete circuit. So this thing has got quite a bit of cooling capacity, even it's got a lot of airflow on it. Nine big, gallons. Nine gallons. So <laughs> yeah. So this big block four that he's got that's blown is going to run nice and cool. It should. I'm sure it's going to be a riot driving too. <laughs> yeah, the only thing that kind of bums me out about this is my buddy years ago, and I mean, he's, he's a good friend of mine, and I did not remember it until he told me here recently. I had to, I had to be nosy and ask him what kind of gear ratio it had in the rear end. And he said, don't you remember? You said, we set up a 430 gear for it. Like, ugh. <laughs> I was kind of hoping for 390 or 410, but 430 is okay. We just ain't going to be able to run 90 mile an hour. You can in a city block. Half a city block. Yeah, in a city block. <laughs> <laughs> Not in my town. We're <laughs> too full of potholes. Yeah. That's everything Illinois is known for. We might have fast cars, but we can't really drive anywhere too hot because of the holes. Nope. I think. Yep, we're pretty good. All right, so what's the next step, Jimmy? Smear silicone and pray. There we go. Uh, where's all your gasket sealer? Or did, did I take it? Um, did you give it to me or did I take it? Did I put it in my toolbox or is it still here? Or? It's got to be still here. Okay. I know I was using Did you bring one or two of them? I don't even remember. But I know I've been using one. That one? Is ultra gray. This is red. I don't think I'd want to really put red on it. black? It'll be more compatible with the aluminum. I, I, I don't mean working-wise, looking-wise. So there is all kinds of different gasket material makers you can make, and they're all made by Permatex. It's a, a really good brand. Um, there's actually red, there's black, and I have the gray. We're going to go with the gray just so if you see it, it somewhat matches. It's one of those cosmetic-type things. These are high temp oil resistant, gas resistant type. Um, so yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and put some of that on there. I am not a big fan of, I'm bound to turn it and knock it. Not a big fan of that little nozzle thing. Yeah, I'm not either. I like to put my fingers on it and pat it down or smear it, whatever you want to call it. That way you can get the proper, whatever you want, thickness of it. I try to keep a, just a thin layer around the porch so it doesn't ooze out into the porch, if you know what I mean. If you Earlier I wiped some of it off with a weather strip sealer that oozed into the porch. If you're watching me shake my hand or wiggle my finger or whatever when I'm putting this on, yes, I am old, but that's not because of it. It just helps it kind of smear and go around it better. Get it on the right, just back and forth. Yeah. It's kind of like woodworking, going against the grain, going with the grain. Getting yeah, it like the dabbing your paintbrush, you know. Yep.
And mind you, I said at the beginning of this video of how to install a tunnel ram intake. This actually applies to all intake manifolds, whether it be a single four, a dual four, whatever you're working with, something fuel injected, anything like that. Aluminum heads, cast iron heads, cast iron heads with aluminum intake, everything. Uh, it's, it's pretty much all the same process. Um, you just want a really good seal. because, As Jimmy said earlier, you, you don't want any of this leaking. Each scenario of a leak can cause issues that you really don't want. Um, so really, it's just, you know, take your time. You know, make sure you got all the right materials, the right tools. Check your work and just go ahead and do it. This isn't rocket science. It's not hard. It, it is just going through and making sure you're doing it right. Just a little time consuming and... It's just best to check, check, and recheck. Yep. It's kind of like going back to when you cut a two-by-four. Measure twice, cut once. Cut it off twice and it's still too short. Yeah. That's what my dad used to tell me. So what he's doing here, he's putting a little bit thicker of the gasket material on the china rail where the um, um, cork gasket meets the Felpro gasket. That is a common location where you could get a leak. Yep. So a little bit extra material in there sealer does not hurt anything but as usual make sure this stuff cures dries hardens whatever you want to call it before you fire up the engine oh you ain't gonna have to you ain't gonna have to worry about that one i don't know how soon you're gonna have it in the engine but all it needs is 24 hours yeah we're not done. gonna have this thing in the engine bay in 24 hours i kind of wish we did you ain't gonna have it home in 24 hours no. probably no Maybe later this weekend, but I don't know. It depends. Um, by the way, like I think when I started building this engine with Jimmy, we had talked about um, running it on an engine dyno. Uh, we're not going to do that. Uh, there's a couple different factors. Um, one of ones is actually time. Um, so what we're going to do when we go to, you know, fire this thing up, we're still a lot, a ways off of that. We still have to do a lot of wiring on that 68 Ford Thunderbird. Um, there's quite a bit of work left, but. We're actually going to put the engine in the car, get everything hooked up, and Jimmy and I are going to fire it up in the car, break in the cam, so we'll do a video on that, explain all that, and then tune the carburetors. Um, then at one point, because I'm extremely curious on horsepower engines, uh, we're gonna actually take it to a chassis dyno and get the actual wheel horsepower. Um, I know there's a lot of talk about correction factors on the engine dynos and all this and all that, Kind of want to avoid that right now and just due to time, some budget things, and just to get stuff done because uh, No Name Nationals is coming up in like 130 some days. We're going to go the old school route and do it in the car. Where's this national? Uh, Sykeston, Missouri. Oh, that's right. Yep, September 30th yeah. and October 1st. We got a bunch of call out. I would love to go to that. Well, you're going to go to it, Jimmy. I think my mom and dad are going to go because. They're also car people. My dad got me into cars as a young kid. I know my mom's always liked them. She had a cool 65 dark convertible. I uh, came from a Mopar family, so it might be just a little bit sacrilegious building this Ford, but I've got a Mopar that'll be being done this winter. Um, That's okay. I was always raced Chevys my whole life, and I had one front engine dragster, and most of my cars been front engine dragsters, run Chevys. Um, I had a funny car in 75, rear engine car in 77, and hated both of them. And um, went back to the front engine car. And um, I had one dragster. I had a 392 Chrysler in it I built. I liked the idea of having Hemi. Yeah, who doesn't like that idea? It was about three times more building that thing than it was building a small block Chevy. But, or I mean, expensive wise. But the problem with it is. It ran one tenth of a second faster than my small block Chevy. <laughs> and the Hemi was on Alki and the Chevy was on gas. <laughs> and now I'll explain that one to me. Yeah, no kidding. <clears throat> now somebody, either I didn't know what I was doing when I built that Hemi or the Chevy. I got extremely lucky on, but... That Chevy, I did set Cedar Axter National Record, July 4, 74, AHRA, 1,000 foot. Speaking of AHRA, that's what the No Name Nationals is, sanctioned by. 
And Dallas Brown is the guy that runs the whole organization. And a little bit of history on that, Jimmy actually shared a shop with Dallas's dad. I rented it from him. Rented it from him, yeah. So I remember when Dallas was just a little kid. He, so that, was always, he was always a good kid, though. So that's a small world. We are. He's in Tennessee. The race is in Missouri. Jimmy and I are in Illinois. And uh, small world. And uh, with Dallas... With Dallas growing up, he was grew up around race cars. His dad raced a Buick, and I even built one or two engines for him. Did all the machine work on a lot of them because that's what I have in the machine shop. And Dallas was a good kid. I would expect nothing of him but to be a gearhead when he grew up. Yeah, you know? and he does. He's got a lot of Buicks. He's big Buick guy. Well, he's got his dad's old stuff. Yeah. So we let this dry up for a few? Or we no, I'm ready if you are. I'm ready. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just find a place for this thing here. I don't want it to fall anywhere. So you know what? I'm just going to – that's one thing about filming and trying to do things all at once. Not used to that. You know you what? I, put it on that little peg right there. Yeah, I can just put it on this old – that's a good idea. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. Um, there. Right there. So what we're going to do – we're going to put this tunnel ram, lovely, beautiful tunnel ram, on this engine. Get a hold of the back of it like I got it. That no trouble is you're going to block your camera. Yep. So you want to go down slowly with it. And make sure that we get the bow holes on it. Yes. I got them. Okay. I got them. So you want to check your bolt holes. And there's one, here. one thing you definitely have to do on this engine. And he sees the bolts. They're aluminum head, steel bolt. Aluminum head, steel bolt, I think so. As Jimmy said, and he sees. So, man, this is actually looking like a real engine. Not in a million pieces in two different garages. <laughs> it's the kind of day I've been waiting for. It is. Actually, Friday the 13th, which is usually a day that... Why we're using anti-seize. Why we're using <laughs> anti-seize, yep. Somebody could ever invent anti-seize that wasn't so nasty. You get one little speck on you and it's all over you. Yep. <laughs> so we are using uh, ARP bolts and all that. Um, Friday the 13th, he's your unlucky day. I'm a little superstitious, so... Whatever, but a year ago I lost my grandma. She was a great woman. Um, she's from a Eastern European country and always enjoyed life and always had fun. A lot of stuff that I currently do in this world, other than cars, I get from her, from gardening, flowering, to cooking, to all that fun stuff. But I, I'm sure, because when I was younger, pulling up in her driveway with a loud car, she'd give me an earful, and I'd, I'd almost laugh what she'd have to say if I'm pulling up in this car. It'd be kind of funny. Well, I just remember when my my kids was growing up, or when I was growing up, my parents used to tell me, "Better stop being a brat. One of these days you'll have kids and you'll grow up." <laughs> yeah. Well, let me tell you, mine was just as bad. Yeah. <laughs> Not worse. <laughs> my grandma was a hell of a cook. Oh yeah. Little story too. Jimmy grew up with my dad, and uh, that was years ago. Um, we were the terror of the neighborhood. Yeah, <laughs> going back to probably early '60s, late '50s. Yeah. Or wait, I said that backwards. Late '50s, early '60s. Well, we were both born in '53. Yeah. I'm not too sure this is gonna start. So, one thing, too, running these tunnel rams, you can actually run into a little uh, bit of difficulty putting these bolts in. Actually, I think we're going to wind up having to shorten some of these bolts. But, you want me to try to get them finger, fingers going? Or? Well, you got to remember, you can't use an opened-end wrench on these bolts. Right. Because they're a 12-point. So if you see in here what Jimmy's talking about with the tunnel ram, how tall it is, and how they have yep, no I space in short. the runner. So he's gonna actually gonna go shorten 
couple of them. Couple of those bolts up. So I'm gonna sharpen one to see if it works. Yeah. Before I mess up. More so as Jimmy goes ahead and shortens that, um, I'm gonna take a break and we'll be back.